Hello everybody, back with another video. Today I'll be going over some cool fabric mods for Minecraft Java 1.19 that will hopefully add a little something something, a little je ne sais quoi, to spice up your vanilla experience. All these mods can be found on the CurseForge website, and I'll leave links in the description if you're interested. First up, I of course have to mention several obligatory performance enhancing and utility mods. At the very minimum, I would recommend the trifecta of sodium, lithium, and phosphor. So if your game is a little laggy or just want it to run a little bit smoother, definitely have these installed. Additionally, you can use ferrite core to reduce the amount of memory being used up. Also check out clumps that groups XP orbs together to reduce lag. This is especially useful for mob farms that produce a lot of XP. To play around with some shaders, I personally use Iris. Currently I have BSL shaders and complementary shaders installed. Right now I'm using the complementary shader pack. Oftentimes you may want to configure certain mods to your liking, but don't want to go through the trouble of manually editing the files. I definitely recommend Mod Menu that will provide a list of all your installed mods and a user-friendly interface for toggling various features. If a mod has something you would rather have disabled, this definitely can make the process much easier. One problem that can arise when playing with many different mods is not knowing all the crafting recipes. Just Enough Items provides an in-game list of all items, including modded ones. When you click on an item, it will show you its recipe, if it has one, and other additional information, like if it can be smelted, composted, or anything like that. Another issue that can arise when playing with several different mods is sometimes there are crafting conflicts where the recipe for one mod is the same as another, but they make different things. To resolve this, you can use Polymorph. By clicking on this button, you can see the available crafting options and select the one you want to set as the default. Do you ever have tooltips that are too long and sometimes clip off the screen and you can hardly even read the text? This can be helped with the use of Tooltip Fix. Now the tooltips will be condensed and able to fully fit on the screen. Lamb's dynamic lighting can light up the surrounding area when you're holding an item like a torch, lantern, or other light-emitting object in either your main or offhand. It also works if you throw the item onto the ground. Moving on to various biome-enhancing mods, first there's Terralith. It doesn't add any new blocks into the game, but it just uses existing ones to create around 100 new biomes, including Yellowstone, and the Skylands, it also adds a few new structures into the game as well. One of my favorite biome mods is Ecologix. It adds new life to beaches by adding coconut trees and coconut crabs. You can eat the coconut slices and it will clear away potion effects like buckets of milk. Crab claws can be used like shears or cooked to be eaten. In cold biomes, you might find penguins which will give regeneration when you're nearby. When baby penguins grow into adults, they will drop feathers, which can be brewed into a potion of sliding that will make you slide on any surface, as if it were ice. In deserts, there are camels that can be tamed and ridden by up to two players at once, and equipped with a chest for some mobile storage. They can be fed dead bushes and cacti, and bred using prickly pears. Eating a prickly pear raw will slightly damage you, but you can avoid this by cooking it. Azalea trees now have their own wood type instead of that plain old oak, complete with a whole new set of planks, doors, stairs, boats, and every other wooden variant. It also adds walnut trees and squirrels, along with its own set of wooden variants as well. Another mod I like is Biome Makeover, that makes improvements to various different biomes, including the Badlands, which now have Illager Bandits, new type of cactus, tumbleweeds, and even ghost towns. It makes changes to the swamp where you can find cattails or witches' hats in sunken ruins. Wearing a witch's hat will make witches neutral towards you and will also open up a quest interface where you can find various ingredients and she will give you something in return. And my personal favorite, the Dark Forest. It completely overhauls woodland mansions and even adds a new illager boss, the Adjudicator. But I'll leave that for you to find on your own. There are also these large crystals growing out of the ground that can be used to craft an altar. 
you can place a shard and an enchanted item into the altar, and the enchanted item will be increased by one level, even past their normal enchantment limits, but at the cost of also applying a curse to it. In addition, this mod also adds many more curses into the game, rather than just the two standard vanilla ones. A few examples include the curse of decay that makes your items degrade faster, the curse of unwieldiness that will slow down your attack speed, and the curse of buckling which will increase your fall damage. You may have noticed some of the enchantments and curses have a brief description next to them. This is from the mod simply named Enchantment Descriptions. With the Caves and Cliffs update, we got Lush Caves and Dripstone Caves, but the mod Cave Enhancements adds a few more including Goop Caves with the new Goop mob that you can put in a bucket. In Dripstone Caves you might find a Dripstone Tortoise that is neutral towards the player unless attacked, then it will shoot Dripstone Spikes up from the ground. You can also craft Amethyst Flutes and Amethyst Arrows. From the same developers of Terralith, they also revamped the Nether Dimension with the mod Incendium. It doesn't add any new blocks either, but adds a ton of new biomes and structures, including the Quartz Flats, the Withered Forest, Piglin Villages, and the Forbidden Castle. With End Remastered, instead of using Eyes of Ender to find the Stronghold and place in the portal, you will need to find 12 unique eyes scattered throughout the Minecraft world, from pillager outposts to jungle temples, even defeating an Elder Guardian and the Wither. This mod is interesting because it really forces you to explore your world and give it a sense of adventure. Better End completely revamps the End Dimension by adding a ton of new biomes, blocks, items, and mobs, and could honestly have a whole dedicated video on its own. If you feel as though Better End adds too much, but still want that vanilla feel, try out Enderscape. It adds a few new biomes and mobs such as the Drifter that you can bounce on and obtain Drift Jelly from. There is Nebulite Ore that you can fill into a cauldron, charge up a mirror and link it to a lodestone, then right click to teleport to the lodestone from wherever you are. This mod is fully compatible with Better End, so you can incorporate both if you wish. Up next are a few Vanilla Plus mods I really enjoy. First we have Charm. This adds many new features. You can capture bats into buckets. When you release them, they briefly give the echolocation effect, which will make nearby mobs glow. It adds the new beekeeper villager profession that uses a beehive as their workstation. You can make an ender pearl block, Eating a chorus fruit within a certain distance of the block will teleport you to it. The distance can be configured in the settings. You can condense other blocks as well, such as gunpowder and sugar. Bookshelves now come in all wood types. And there are also bookcases that you can store book items in. Poisonous cave spiders have a chance to drop cobwebs and husks can drop sand, making them renewable. You can craft bundles to better manage your inventory, and work well as an early game shulker box. You can change the color of the nether portal by throwing a corresponding die into the portal. There are more colored variants of sea lanterns that can be crafted using coral, You can transfer an enchantment to a book using a grindstone at the cost of consuming the original item. It adds moo blooms that can be used with a bowl to get their respective suspicious stew. No. 
The mod includes many other features that I haven't mentioned, so definitely check it out. If you like Charm, also take a look at, or rather, a listen to, Charmonium, that adds more background music and ambient sound effects to add a little more immersion to your game. Another Vanilla Plus mod is Additional Additions, that gives more uses to copper by adding watering cans to help crops grow, a wrench that can rotate blocks, and gives more uses to the smithing table by making rose gold armor and tools that is somewhere between iron and diamond. It adds amethyst lamps, and you can scrape the patina off of oxidized copper with an axe and use the patina to conduct signals like redstone. Now you can have parallel redstone lines without them connecting to each other. Ropes can be crafted from string and used to climb up and down vertical sides like ladders. Spy glasses can be attached to crossbows. Elder Guardians drop trident shards that can be used to craft tridents. Glow sticks can be made from glow ink sacks and thrown to light up an area. Piglins can trade gold rings that can be used to upgrade netherite into a gilded trim that will pacify piglins as if you were wearing gold armor. This can be a controversial change, so it can easily be disabled if you think it's too OP. Think the wandering trader could do with some better trades? Now they sell a mystery bundle that contains a random assortment of items. Sometimes you might get lucky, but sometimes it might also be junk. You can use an amethyst shard with a potion of swiftness to brew a potion of haste. Next we have features that almost made it into the game, but didn't quite make the cut. First there is friends and foes that adds the cute copper golem that will randomly press buttons and slowly oxidize over time. Then there is the glare who will seek out dark places to alert the player that mobs can spawn there. Then there are other illagers including the isologer and the illusioner. Next we have forgotten features that revamps birch forests by making the trees taller and adding mushrooms that grow on the side. In the deep dark you can obtain souls by breaking skulk. Souls can be used to craft soul arrows. In ancient city loot you may find an echo bow. When fired it will release a sonic boom similar to the warden. Also in ancient city loot you may find an Echo Diamond Sword that can also be crafted by placing a Diamond Sword and an Echo Shard into a smithing table. It has basically the same stats as a normal Diamond Sword. However, when it is upgraded to Netherite, a Netherite Echo Sword is slightly stronger than a normal Netherite Sword. Wilder Wild adds more to the 1.19 Wild update. In Ancient City Loot, you can find an Ancient Horn that will create a sound wave. You can also craft Echo Glass by using an Echo Shard and Tinted Glass. It will start to crack in the light, but will heal in darkness, and is able to block the Warden's Sonic Boom attack. There are now Skulk Slabs, Stairs, and Walls, and a bony Osseous Skulk. There are Cypress Trees, Algae, and in savannas, there are large baobab trees that need to be grown with a 4x4 area of saplings. It also adds hollowed logs. Earth to Java adds mobs from the discontinued game Minecraft Earth, such as the Muddy Pig, the Cluck Shroom, Variants of Cows and Sheep, Tropical Slime, the Viler Witch, and the Furnace Golem. Do you hate it when you die and your items despawn or get destroyed? With Wandering Collector, the Wandering Trader might have a chance to sell you your lost items back to you. With Goblin Traders, Goblins will typically spawn underground and offer some pretty nice deals. If you give some raw material, they will give you the smelted version, plus a little extra. Give an item and an enchanted book, 
and it will enchant the item and an extra level higher. They can also sell stylish capes, and even blaze rods and ender pearls. If you're using End Remastered, then this is fairly nerfed. However, if you think it's too easy to obtain Ender Eyes, you could disable specific trades. There are also Vein Goblins that spawn in the Nether, where you can buy Nether Wart and a sword with Sharpness 7 for the cost of 5 Dragon Heads. End Goblin Traders adds goblins to the End Dimension as well. You can buy Slow Falling Potions and Phantom Membranes for Ender Pearls, give them a Totem of Undying for a Void Totem, and a knockback stick for a couple of netherite ingots, and a super axe for 24 netherite. Speaking of the void totem, a normal totem will not save you from falling into the void. However, a void totem will teleport you back to the surface. If you have an iron farm or a villager trading hall, there's no real reason to build a beacon from diamond or netherite. However, with beacon overhaul, it adds a tier system which gives more potent effects depending on how expensive the pyramid is. It also adds additional effects to beacons such as nutrition that will passively replenish your hunger bar. An absolute must-have mod is Capybara that adds the adorable Capybara mob that spawns in jungles. They can be tamed with melons, sugarcane, or apples. You can make it sit or stand by sneaking with a stick and add a chest to the side for storage. You can sit on the capybara, but can't ride it, so you will need to use a lead. Eating animations gives animations to food and drink items. Liquids will empty the bottle, fish will show the bones, and apples will reveal the core. Frankly, I think this should be in the base game. Klee Slabs allows you to break a specific slab without destroying the one above it. Macaw Paintings adds several new paintings while still keeping the vanilla feel. Naturalist adds a few new mobs such as snails that can be picked up in buckets, grizzly bears, butterflies and caterpillars, snakes, deer, blue jays and cardinals. NPC variety gives different skin tones to NPCs like villagers, illagers, and wandering traders. Spellbound weapons add special weapons that can only be obtained by finding loot chests, killing certain mobs, or unlocking secret recipes. A few examples include the Moonlight Edge that can shoot a beam of light, Magmus Bow that can explode on impact, and the Chain Firing Crossbow that can shoot five extra arrows when charged. Straw Golem Rebailed adds the Straw Golem that will automatically harvest crops and put them in nearby containers. Straw Golems live for about seven days and have a love for apples. Structury adds some more structures such as the fisherman's boat, the fire tower, jungle ruins, and swamp ruins. Towns and towers overhauls villages. You can still find traditional villages, but this mod adds a bunch of new types including birch villages, Blocks like bamboo doors, stairs, slabs, bundles, signs, and stripped bamboo. There are calcite stairs and slabs, as well as new types of lamps. 
There are tough stairs and slabs, bloodstone, twisting blackstone, and weeping blackstone. There are chiseled bricks, mossy bricks, copper pillars, and amethyst building blocks as well. Wolves with Armor adds craftable armor for your canine companion. It can be upgraded to netherite in the smithing table, and even enchanted because of course it should. That's all the mods I have for you today. Let me know which one you like the best, or if there's one you thought I should mention, leave it down in the comments. This video took a while to put together, so if you enjoyed it, consider dropping a like. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button to keep up with future videos. See you next time. Bye.